lighting is by far the most important factor influencing the quality of your work, both in real footage and your CG scenes. Today I would like to talk about unbiased lighting techniques. I want to show you how I light my scenes, but there is one important thing I have to mention beforehand. I'm using Octane Render Engine, which is a path tracer. To understand the difference between ray tracers and path tracers, check out my uh, ray tracing and other rendering methods uh, video. In a nutshell, path tracers simulate real-world light uh, straight out of the box, while ray tracing engines give you a point of light which you have to craft and polish in order to get a good-looking result. And this directly affects your technical approach to artistic problems. This is one of the main reasons why I use Octane. Some of you might know I'm a lot into cinematography activity where I have to deal with lights all the time. And this is the magic relationship between real-world lighting techniques and path tracing engines. In unbiased rendering methods, the light is simulated like real-world life, meaning you can use your light same as you would in real life. The size of the light matters, the distance to object matters, and so on. This is where studying real-world lighting techniques comes handy, and that's why I always recommend doing so. The unbiased lighting is quite straightforward, and Octane is famous for giving you quite great results straight away. But I will show you a couple of tricks that are not that obvious in the beginning. I will use this Volvo scene I made in the end of 2018. Let's jump into Cinema 4D with Octane, where I'll be able to demonstrate everything. This is the exact scene I used for the uh, video shown earlier, uh, but I just prepared it for this tutorial. As you can see, no lights, nothing. I can enable my car in there so that you would see that it's that scene. If I will remove these white shaders, you can see that it's my fancy garage floor texture. Most of the times you need a base light, which can be and often is an HDRI map. Uh, so let's proceed and create one. Click Objects, HDRI Environment, and specify the path to your HDRI map. In my case, I just use uh, Night Scene HDRI and it gave me my base reflections. Here we go. That's looking good already, but it's obviously not art directed in any way. And it doesn't look like production shot or anything. Let's disable the car and talk about lights themselves a bit. I will just put my white shader back on the environment elements quickly and create a sphere. So here we have a sphere. Let's create a light. Objects, light, octane, area light. Okay, that's, that's exactly what you're doing most of the times and it's absolutely fine. But there are a couple of crucial things to understand about the light and its behavior. Let's put that car paint shader on the sphere to see what's going on. And you see that reflection is quite harsh. It's just a um, white rectangle. Evenly lit surfaces does not exist in the real world. So you would always want to use a texture or at least a fall off for your lights. This will help you achieving soft light gradations and much more interesting ref reflections on your model. So let's go to a light tag and in distribution, let's choose octane fall off like so. And straight away, you see the big changes. Let's go into the settings and change the minimum value. Let's compare it to what it was. That's what it was. And now with fall off, not a lot of changes, uh, but I think it's not the most uh, suitable context for showcasing the, this technique. Basically, what this allows you to do is to get the soft gradations of your shadows instead of harsh circles or squares. And what's happening is, because the falloff is set to react to camera's position, it changes its brightness uh, depending on the position of your camera. See? In case of reflection, uh, light interacts with the object that is reflecting it. If I would change the mode to normal versus vector and choose 90 or 180 degree, it will change the fall off. And this can be used in other scenarios as well, yeah, depending on your scene. I'll just leave fall off alone for now. Now, next important thing is the distance. You see the shadows are quite soft, no matter how far away the light is. 
and this is because scaling is very important in unbiased engines. If I'll turn on the preview of my car, you see that the sphere is almost the size of the car. So let's shrink it down a bit. Let's make it something like 20 centimeters. And here we go. Now the shadows are super soft. Let's, uh, let's click options and uncheck check camera. This will allow me to navigate in viewport but without affecting the live viewer. Uh, our light is still really big and this is why our shadows are super soft. The size of the light is really important. Let's create something smaller to try to replicate something like this light here. I know that it's 15 centimeters wide and maybe about 10 centimeters tall maybe even smaller, but who cares? So I'll select my light and go into details. And there, size X would be 15 centimeters, size Y would be 10. And of course, the intensity of the light went down, so we will increase it a bit. And here you go, straight away, you see that it directly influenced the softness of your shadows. So the smaller the light source, the harder the shadows. The bigger the light source, the softer the shadows. The difference is pretty big. So in order to get realistic shadows and stuff, I encourage you to Google uh, real world uh, production lights and their dimensions. Now you see that the distance to object matters much more. Light properties like size and distance also directly influences the effects like caustics and volumetrics. Let's quickly create uh, something different from the sphere. I'll just create a platonic beveled edges, duplicate it, and make the duplicate 10% uh, smaller. And then I'll mer merge those two. And now I'll drop a glass shader on it. The reason I'm, I did a duplicate of the platonic is because as physically correct engine, Octane cares about the volume of your objects. So if you want to replicate real glass, it can't be just plain. It has to be a cube or something, if that makes sense. It has to have volume in it in order to be calculated properly. So with a small light source, you see that caustics are calculated quite good. And again, I don't think it's the, the best context to showcase the effect. The best context would probably be something like rippled water. Uh, you know that effect you have at the floor of the pool or that's caustics. But yeah, for caustics you usually need small light sources or the sun. That's all good. Let's increase the size of our light and see what, what will happen. I'll change the fall off of my light. And as we are increasing the size, I'll decrease the intensity of the light. The, the light source size um, dictates how pronounced is the caustics effect in this case. Let's make a comparison. Let's reset the light size to its default and decrease the intensity. So you see a massive light source produces no caustic effects. It's just a subtle, soft shadow. This is what it was with the small light source and this is what it is with the big source. Quite a big difference. Let's bring our small light back and let's duplicate it and move the big one quite far away. I, I'll go to big lights uh, light tag and decrease the intensity again. And now I have a combo of those two. I have nice soft shadows plus pronounced caustics effect. Let's move this light a bit further away. Great thing about uh, 3D in general is that you can have angles and light positions as, uh, which you can't achieve in real life. In this case, let's go to small lights light tag, go to visibility and uncheck camera visibility and we just hide it. That's the best cheat in humankind history. And this is the reason why a lot of companies comes to CG artists for their product visualizations. Because real world photography and videography just can't produce such results. That's all cool and great. 
Next thing I would like to talk about is light's relationship with volumes in Octane. So let's just leave our small light in and in our HDRI tag, let's go to medium and add fog. By default, it's quite thick. So let's reduce the density, 0.1, uh, 0.1 looks good. Let's increase the intensity of our light. And here we go. We have a lovely light blob. Uh, this kind of effect is what you may be after, but understanding real world lighting can help you to have a lot of control in a lot of conditions. This looks fine, but what if I would like to have something like a spotlight? Uh, let's click compare, store render buffer to have uh, our frame for comparison. I'll go to my light properties, change the area shape to disk. And in order to have a spotlight, you need to block the light's direction. And what I'm usually doing is I'm dropping the tube around my light. Control click on the tube so it appears on the position of our light. And let's scale it down. But already you see what I mean. And I usually drop a light blocking shader on my tube. And this is just a diffuse material with pure black color on it and all other channels are disabled. This ensures that this object is not participating in any calculations, it's just blocking the light. And here you go, uh, you have your spotlight. Just like in real life, just by blocking the light, you can direct it in a much more controllable manner. What if you would like to get a narrow beam of light? Well, just stretch your light blocker. Here you go. This was our original um, spotlight, and this is our new one, more directed one. Now let's create a second copy of this light. And the second one, I want, to, I want it to be smaller. Uh, you probably noticed that sampling rate uh, parameter in your lights. And I really think that major part of uh, Octane users don't, doesn't understand what it's for. You may even play with it a bit and notice that if you increase it, it makes light a bit more intense. But in reality, what it does is it's balancing noise patterns when you have different uh, light sizes in your scene. I just made our big light three times bigger than our small one. And by default, they have sample of one each. And you see that the left one, the bigger one, it resolves faster, while smaller one have a more pronounced noise in it. If I will go to our small, uh, to our small light and increase the sampling rate, if it's three times smaller, then I need three times more samples. And now you see that they are resolving equally. I think that's a really important thing for everyone to know. That's all nice and good theory, but damn, Andre, what did you do in your car scene with the reflections and stuff? Well, uh, for fun's sake, uh, let's just quickly recreate the lighting of this scene. I'll enable my car, and uh, as I mentioned, my base light was HDRI. Uh, let's start shaping our car with lights. Let's pick up a good and sexy angle. Oops. Okay, this looks good. Options, uncheck, check camera. So one of the most popular lighting techniques is called three-point lighting, where we would have our key light, our fill light, and our hair light. There's no hair on car, but it's just the name. So this will be our key light, sort of. We're dealing with car here, so it's not a portrait, you know. If you ever seen real world car photography studios, there are super big soft boxes in there. So I'll scale this one quite, I'll make this one quite big. And again, use the fall off. Oops, not Cinema's 4D's fall off, but Octane's fall off. And the light almost completely disappeared. As I said, uh, in each particular unique case, you would need to play with your lights a little bit in order to make them look good. Let's increase the intensity. And uh, this will be our key light, uh, highlighting the wheel and a little bit of reflections on the wing. I don't want it to really light the rest of the car. 
So here we go, our key light done. Let's create another light and this will be our fill light. Again, uh, kind of in traditional three point lighting, fill light supposed to be a complementary light to your key light, which implies that key light is much more intense. Okay, that's looking good, but uh, some shadows, we may leave it like that, to be honest. Let's try fall off. Okay, that, that looks fine. Now we need to highlight the shape of the car somehow. Let's duplicate this light, click PSR to reset our position, rotate it 90 degrees and put it directly above the car. Like in real world badass studios. Uh -huh. Let's reduce its intensity a bit and here we go, we have quite sexy reflection on our car. Let's disable visibility of all, of, of all our lights. Remember the best cheat in the history of humankind. I like it. And also stepping outside of uh, three point lighting a bit and going a bit into the light direction uh, side of things, we need to somehow light our background. Let's create a regular light and move it to our wall behind the car point it to the wall, something like that. Maybe move it a bit further away from the wall. Let's decrease its intensity a bit. Let's create another light and put it uh, exactly behind our car. This one actually is supposed to be our hair light. The one right above the car is just an addition, just a necessity for a car photography. Okay, so our hair light or backlight, whatever. And again, the reflection is quite harsh. So light settings, distribution, fall off, like so. Here we go. That looks like a decent hair light. And you see it created a light stripe on the floor behind the car, which is also quite nice. Every scene, every environment is unique. So instead of asking how someone lit uh, one particular scene, you better start thinking how light works in real life. This will massively help you and your project. If you're working on a video or something for each particular shot, you would uh, need to adjust your light, uh, just like on real world set. I think that's it. Once again, my biggest advice to you is to learn real world lighting techniques. As a bonus to this tutorial, I decided to publish my shaders I used to shade my car in this video. The link is down in the description. Uh, if you like it, you can buy it. As usual, thank you for watching and I see you soon. Peace.